Apple presents events at the Apple Store. Please welcome this evening's guest moderator, Yu Ming from Freshness Mag. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Ming, as you guys know. Um, some of you guys in the crowd may know me from the work that I do. Uh, I'm the co-founder of FreshnessMag.com, uh, a founder of SneakerCon, and also the publisher of Sneaker News. Uh, most recently, I published Sneaker News Volume 1, a collectible and premium magazine. Coming from a design background, I'm a lover of beautiful design and great product. So naturally, I'm a big fan of Beats by Dre. I uh, want to welcome everyone to the Apple Audit Series, uh, a program that spotlights the world's best and most beloved artists and allows them to use Beats as a canvas to tell a story. Uh, today, Hiroshi Fujiwara joins that list of artists who have created a custom collection for the Beats brand. Um, I would like to kick things off uh, by asking the CMO of Beats, Mr. Omar Johnson, to join me on stage to tell us a bit more about what this evening is all about. Um, good evening. My name is Omar Johnson. I am the CMO and um, head of marketing for Beats by Dr. Dre. So I always tell people um, I have one of the best jobs on the planet, right? I'm one of the luckiest guys in marketing. It's for a few different things. I mean, Beats, as far as making premium, high quality products, yes, we do that. Um, from a sound perspective, you know, our iconic sound has been born of decades of work and making hit records in a studio. But why I'm lucky is because we get to work across these places like music. I get to work with some of the best artists on the planet. Dre, Trent Reznor, you think the Nicki Minaj's of the world. Um, we get to work with those guys every day because they believe in our sound. Sports, you look at the LeBron James's of the world, Serena Williams, Neymar Juniors. You look at the best athletes in any sport, they're typically in beats. Um, New York's own Victor Cruz is one of our guys. And again, we're really committed to having the best athletes. And then design. Um, design is super important to this brand. It's also why we are all here today. So, um, you know, through this work in design, I met Hiroshi, and um, he's been um, such an inspiration to me. I first noticed his work when I worked at Nike. And then to come to Beats and have the privilege to work with him um, has been nothing short of amazing. You know, we're all here because we love Hiroshi, and we love the way he storytells. We love the cleanliness of his design. And that was, and is, what he's brought to Beats, to the new, head, the new Solo 2, and to the Pill, which you'll see here, and I'm sure he'll show you and tell you about later. But um, what a lot of people don't know about Hiroshi is, he's also a musician and a DJ. And he's pioneered um, some combinations of like punk and hip hop in Japan. So when you think about um, his qualifications to do this kind of project with Beats, um, one, from a design perspective, he's amazing. Two, he also knows sound. He knows the emotion of sound. He knows what sound should sound like. So um, I want you all to kind of put your hands together, um, give a warm New York welcome to Hiroshi Fujiwara. Hello everyone, my name is Hiroshi. Thanks for coming for tonight. So Hiroshi, I would like yes. to kick things off and ask you a question uh, on when did you first discover Beats as a brand and as a product? Beats as a brand, I think one of my friends called Edison Chang, he was talking about, hey Hiroshi, Dre is making a headphone kind of project. And then I think he introduced someone, or maybe Omar, you know, like four or five years ago. And that was the first time I saw. And I met Omar and talking about this product, you know, project to do the make a headphone, like fragment headphone, like for four years already. How did the uh, collaboration with Beats on the artist series begin? So mine started like four years ago, I told you, the, with Omar, but never come in the productions, which is, Maybe the print is too difficult, or, and then companies kind of changing, you know, the Monster and, you know, HTC or whatever, that's kind of changing, and now it's Apple, and it, it kind of reset. We start a new beginning, and we made this series. 
can you take us uh, through the design of the product? Uh, yeah. Where did the inspiration come from uh, for the materials and the colors? Mm -hmm. Also, what story are you trying to tell with, the, with this design? Uh, and does it connect with some of the other collaborations that you have done? For these headphones? No, there's no so much connections, but I think we've been like 10 samples for these four years. We had many samples, many printing, many other designs or beats. And then finally, uh, I think I always wanted to do this kind of chrome things, like when I saw the movie Terminator, or like those kind of science fiction movie, which the which the computer graphic kind of things. And it's always with chrome. So I want to make it something like chrome things covering over, all over your head, kind of. So I asked them to make all chrome headphones. But the printing process is really difficult, they said. So we couldn't make it the samples for the beginning. But finally, we did it very beautiful way. Did it uh, connect with any of the other collaborations that you've done in the past? The, this chrome one? No, the chrome one is kind of first time yeah, for me. Fantastic. Uh, Beats is passionate about sound and emotion. Mm -hmm. How did that play into your approach working with the product? The sound and the emotion. Sound and emotions. Mm, I always listen to the music anyway. The sound is always near me and headphone too. I, I kind of want to talk about headphones. And before the headphone, I want to talk about technologies which is like evolutions of technology. What is evolutions of technology I often think about? Do you know, have you ever think about evolution of technology? Sure, yeah. Yeah, what I is mean, it? I mean, uh, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> is I anyone mean, can answer it? evolution of technology? I mean, we've, uh, we've always, you know, we grew up on, uh, you know, with Apple and yeah. also growing up with Beats. We've always wondered where technology can, can go, you know, mm -hmm. looking at, this, for instance, the iPad. It's incredible where we've come from. Right. So it's easy to see making everything smaller, like Apple or headphone or whatever. The music, the, I was kind of so the thinking about evolution of technology and the music ways. It used to be the music, you have to go to she's alive, or you have to go to see someone singing, playing music. And then somebody invented a binary record, which is, you know, 30 centimeter, 12 inches things coming to you, and you can listen to his voice and music. I think that is really evolution. And then became the CD, like this small, and then now it's MP3, it's nothing. So the you know, technology, evolution of technology is getting things, getting smaller and smaller and nothing, and the music is nothing now. But still, you need some equipment, like headphones or speakers, to listen to the music, to listen to the technologies. You know, to get technology, you need iPhone. To listen to the advanced music, you need a good headphones still. So I think it, this is kind of really important things. Well, you talk a lot about music um, in your life. Uh, how do, how, what role does music play in your uh, life and work? What kind of music, you mean? Uh, do you listen to a lot of music yeah, when you're I working? Yeah, I do listen to m lots of music. But now, the, I think iPod changed every, you know, the way to listen to the music. You know? So it's always I have like 1,000, 10,000 music in the iPod. And then it's shuffled. So. Do you use uh, headphones or do you use uh, something like the pill when uh, you're both, working? Both. But I normally use headphones because, again, the old story, when I was listening to the music, I was like early 70s, I think, you know, and there was my dad's stereo in my house. But there was no headphones because no one listened to the music with the headphones because it was speaker systems or radios with one earphones. But when the Sony invented Walkman, I, I put the headphone as first time, and I was really surprised how the sound is so beautiful. Because of like voices this way, and the guitars, drums from this way, you never get that kind of emotions the, when I first put on a headphone on my head. 
So since then, I was really obsessed to listen to with the headphones. And I think everyone here start to listen to the music with headphones already. But my age, headphones was amazing things. And it's still going on. Uh, a little bit more about music. Uh, who are you listening to currently? L like now? Uh, mm -hmm. What artists are you listening to? Uh, a lot of music, you know. I can't really say it. You know, from Beatles to Dore or whatever, like hip hop, rock and roll to hip hop, punk rock, soul, jazz, Any everything. Favorite? Is it more on the American side or the Japanese side? Oh, it's, uh, it's really jazz, like classical jazz, like Barney Kessel, Havels, the guitar players, which I, my favorite is now, I think. Or reggae, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like it? You like reggae? Reggae dub? <laughs> Who has been the biggest inspiration to you throughout your career? Maybe the not person, but like punk rock or hip hop culture. That too is biggest inspiration for me. Are there any uh, persons in particular that you can name? Oh, well, when I listened to the Six Pistols first time, that was Six Pistols. But then I found out that was like Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood behind and like hip hop's. Africa Van Brata or, you know, yeah? yeah? <laughs> Grand Master Fresh. You know, when I came here, New York, that was like 1982 or 83, as first time. That was uh, really the time what hip hop is happening. So I was really lucky to see those things. Sure. Uh, following up on that, uh, when you were visiting in New York and you were introduced to hip hop, uh, mm -hmm. Were there any records that you took home with you? Yeah, many records from Tommy Boy record. I visited Tommy Boy and they gave me many vinyls, like, you know, Jazzy Sensation, Planet Rock, that kind of things. Um, well, I'm gonna turn the uh, stage over to the audience to ask some questions. Yeah. Welcome, nice to Hello. meet you. Nice to meet you. What did you wanna be when you were a kid? I never thought about it, but my mom and dad always ask me to be a doctor or a pilot. <laughs> you mean, that means maybe, oh, you have to be a leech, I guess. <laughs> and I never really listened to my parents. How you doing, Hiroshi? Hello, Hello you, Ming. Uh, so I first was introduced to you through the sneaker culture. I knew you originally as the H in HTM. Yes. And I just want to personally say thank you for your influence on the sneaker culture. But I also want to ask you, how do you feel the sneaker culture and designing so many collaborations has influenced your growth as a brand? Mm, that's a difficult question. And first of all, I, I don't know if I introduced sneaker culture or no, but I really like the sneakers. And I never really wear the kind of leather soles shoes, like Italian shoes. Still, I never have those kind of shoes. The sneakers always with me. Um, maybe because I was, I was doing skateboarding, I was playing basketball when I was kids, so the sneaker is always there. And I was really happy to do Nike collaboration things. You know, when I met Mark Parker, maybe 15 years ago in Tokyo, and you know I was asked joining to design their team, which was you know I really think that was really lucky, and I never thought this sneaker cultures happened this big. I'm um, you know quite surprised and good surprise. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your time with uh, Eric Clapton? and uh, then the stuff you've done together? Uh, yeah, Eric, I met him like maybe 10, 15 years ago when he was in Japan. Basically, he was, when he, he's still in, living in London and there was a store near his house who was selling the good enough clothes. And I think that's where he got good enough clothes. And then when he came to Tokyo, Somehow he got my phone number, then, you know, we get, we went to dinner and we made friendships. And 
to be honest, I never really listened to his early music, Cream and those things, not so much. So, you know, I wasn't the, oh, this is Eric Clapton, that kind of things. I was, oh, are you Eric Clapton? Ah, oh, I didn't recognize you, I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> you know, we made good friendship, I think. You ended up designing a guitar for him, right? Yeah, we start design guitar with him together. Yeah, and then new guitar should coming out next year. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, um, I got to know your Japanese fashion clothing products and your sneakers. But as I've gotten older, I've been more excited about the lifestyle type collaborations you've done. So my question is, how do you choose a brand or choose a product to receive the fragment design collaboration and the logo? Yeah, it has to be kind of one of my favorite brand or my favorite product to work with. Maybe, you know, it doesn't have to be the famous brand. It doesn't have to be a newer brand, just mixed, which if I like it, I will do it. Um, sometimes if I, the product I like, but I should not touch, you know, that is already good as it is. And that kind, there's many cases like that. So I say, I really respect the brand and I really like it, but maybe we should not be together, that kind of things. I always, you know, pick what is best, you know, what is good way to be. So I'm not doing collaboration with everyone, do you know what I mean? The question is in, uh, in English. Um, I'm asking him, he has a store in Aoyama in Japan, and I was wondering why he called pool. <laughs> so, so he's talking about the store called the pool in Aoyama in Tokyo. And that was actually that was a swimming pool. That was a vintage the residence building which built in the nineteen seventy. So there was a kind of little swimming pool in the building and then my friend found discovered the swimming pool which never used for maybe twenty years, thirty years. It was really mess. But I really like the vintage building. And you can see many vintage or old buildings here in New York, and you can convert to cafe or the like liquor store or whatever. But it's very rare to find those old buildings in Tokyo. Because if you go to Tokyo, you can see all the new building, but not really old building. They knock it down and build it new. So it's kind of Tokyo style, I think, which is good. But sometimes I was always looking for those kind of vintage place vintage looking place, and then that was a pool. So I just made it straightly, oh, it should be the pool. Yeah. Hi, Hiroshi. Yes. Uh, from Nike to Levi's to now Beats and Jordan, you've done many projects and collaborations over your entire career. Mm -hmm. uh, my question to you is, what was the first uh, project or collaboration that you did that you felt that people appreciated your work and we're excited about what you're putting out, what brought almost all of us here today. Yeah, I see. I don't know if you know it, but I was doing the, the brand called Good Enough, and then when we were doing Good Enough, I think it was 1990, I was always carrying the Porter Yoshida bag for my DJs. So I asked them, can you make a DJ bag with your fabric? So, and then they made it for Good Enough. So that was our first collaboration, 1990. And I still work with them, and I still love those products. Hi. Hello. First, first, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, I want to get like, I want to know like the inspiration behind the brand Anarchy Forever, Forever Anarchy. Pardon? The inspiration behind the brand Anarchy Forever, Forever Anarchy. <laughs> that was from punk. You know, me and my friend called Jun Takahashi, who does it undercover. We always love punk rock. So that was a brand for, you know, punk taste, which is trend going up and down. And punk trend is moving up and down also. But in the middle, me and Jun Takashi always love the punk clothes. So we just continue with doing it. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. 
What, um, ad, if any, advice do you have for uh, younger up-and-coming brands? Mm. Uh, I think younger brand, when I saw many younger brands, is doing, trying to do too much, trying to act bigger and bigger. So I don't like, well, for me, I don't want to act too big. I want to just act myself or even make it smaller. So if you do start brand, you know, start with t-shirts and shorts, that kind of things, you don't have to spend so much money to do a big exhibition for a year or for new things. So I think just start as big as you can, I mean, you know, as you are. Do you know what I mean? As your size, your maximum size. Hi, um, I wanted to ask you, like, how does your cultural identity play in um, your designing process? Like, how does being Japanese influence you as a designer? I never really feel, I never really work things or make things as I am Japanese, really. I never really thought so. I am well, I'm think I'm more kind of international. And, you know, I'm proud to be a human being, not really prior to being Japanese. Maybe following up on that, uh, how has your travels uh, inspired your design process? Uh, I think that is very important. You know, traveling many places and meeting lots of people, seeing many things. I really can tell you, this is not as same as you looking things through the computers or your laptop. You have to go and experiment. That is, that's it really true. Hi, uh, you talk about evolution of technology. Yes, can you, do you have an answer? Uh, <laughs> well, no, it kind of goes back to your, what you were just saying. You said it's really important to travel, yeah. right? It's important to meet people physically. Yes. But because of the way technology is, mm -hmm. you know, we communicate in short bursts, right? We yeah. show uh, little uh, messages, but how, like for for the person who doesn't have the access to like say New York City, like they couldn't come today, you know, like just being exposed to people like you and mm -hmm. hearing what they can say physically, yeah, you know, um, what can do they still need to go physically to Japan, to New York City, you know, to Chicago, to get the experience? Yeah, I think it's important, really. You know, when I was young, I was just, you know, the I didn't have enough money, or I didn't have money at all, but I really wanted to travel to New York or London, so I did anything I could do. I think it's still important. I mean, the technology things, I told you the music is getting smaller and smaller, and now nothing. That is technology, and that is amazing things, I think. But from the artist side, they are kind of struggling, you know. You can't sell the music, you can't sell the MP3 so much, it used to be selling vinyl or CD is a way of making money with a way to survive for the musicians. So now they are kind of struggling. So technologies, evolution, techno evolution of technologies never be the same as what the kind of art things. I think art scenes needs more organic, needs more analog feeling. Hello, how are you? Hello. Um, thinking back to you when you, uh, your, when you first started um, designing, felt good enough. Yes. How did you remain anonymous? Um, it was written in your book that you, that people didn't figure out that you were designing good enough until I don't even know when. And also, when you were designing good enough, how did you know that good enough at the point was going to make an impact on culture? And how did you know that you were going to make your mark and leave it? Right. I didn't really know. That was... There was a time when the like skateboarding in South Africa is beginning, and then I used to do uh, skateboard, and I still love the skate cultures. So the Stussies or Jimmy G or those kind of things coming out from the LA, and I really wanted to make that kind of T-shirts things in Japan. So I think it's same things happening in England or Paris too. So, and um, we never really thought 
that's going to be impact people. We just want to make something which we can wear. Hi, Roshi. Um, Hello. My question is, did you ever have a particular moment in your life where you realized exactly like how much of a well-known individual you are? How what? Uh, did you ever have a moment yeah. in your life where you realized like, how famous you were? Like you just stood back and you were like, wow. <laughs> uh, right now, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now maybe. But I never really thought so, you know. I don't, I, I don't think I changed. So I never really feel I'm famous. I'm not famous enough. Maybe you can make me famous a little bit more. <laughs> Hi, uh, I just want to thank you for coming. Uh, now, uh, it seems like your work has spanned across a couple, several different mediums. I was wondering if you could talk about what your favorite creative output was and why. I'm really enjoying doing, which I can really never do, like sneakers or technologies, you know, which Nike has. I never able to do it without them. So I'm enjoying working with them. And like these beats, I never be able to do these kind of music things without the companies. So I'm really enjoying. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. <laughs>